With springtime upon us, the sound of a weekend mower and the pleasant smell of fresh cut grass is finally back. But of course, smells entirely subjective. What we perceive as a wonderful whiff of springtime may actually be a chemical cry for help. It's a tough world out there for a plant. It's easy to get walked all over or eaten alive. And because plants can't, well, move, they were forced to evolve a complex system of self-defense. So let's be real here, folks. How many of you out there knew that plants can communicate with each other? Grass isn't alone. Communication is common throughout the plant kingdom, although it's really complex and not fully understood. For the most part, it centers around specialized organic volatile compounds that have really intense odors. Green plants have a very distinct kind of leafy smell to them, which is a result of volatile organic compounds, such as alcohols, esters, and aldehydes, that they and many other plants emit into the air. It's just their natural smell. But when damaged, plants have been found to produce huge amounts of a group of molecules that plant chemistry specialists call green leaf volatiles. When a leaf like a blade of grass is broken or ruptured, it causes a special enzyme called lipoxygenase to begin the breakdown of membranes in the plant cells, producing linoleic and linolenic acids. These acids, which are exposed to oxygen from the damage done, are further broken down by another enzyme into a very potent to our nose molecule called Z3 hexanol. Then it quickly breaks down into Z3 hexanol, known as leaf alcohol, and E2 hexanol, known as leaf aldehyde. This molecule soup, along with some other similarly sized molecules, is the green odor of plants. Our noses can detect the intermediate aldehyde, Z3 hexanol, in amounts as low as 0.25 parts per billion in the air, meaning this is the most likely culprit for that freshly cut grass smell that we know. So why do plants produce and give off all these chemicals? There is some evidence that these chemicals are signals to neighboring plants that danger is imminent. This allows the plants to prepare their defenses. It might also be that large plants warn other parts of themselves, depending on how far these volatile cues travel. A molecule called jasmonic acid is another way that plants activate their defenses. Plant scientists believe this chemical might spark changes in what biomolecules the plants make to help it cope with potential damage or make other parts of itself less nutritious. Another way plants seem to defend themselves is by communicating with bugs. Basically, they call out to the pests of their pests. One study looked at the caterpillar Manduca sexta chowing down on some tobacco plants. All that leaf chewing released green leaf volatiles, but not just the usual ones we've already talked about. The specific bouquet of green leaf volatiles attracted big eye bugs that love to eat these caterpillars. Plant wisdom here, folks. The enemy of your enemy is really your friend. Lastly, other mixtures of these green leaf volatiles are effective antimicrobial agents. More than one study suggests that leaf aldehyde fights botrytis, the fungus that plagues wine grapes. We're still in the very early stages of understanding plant communication, but what we've discovered so far is pretty cool. For those of you who love the smell of fresh cut grass, we hope we haven't made you feel bad for loving the smell of suffering plants. But just like that strange smell of rain in the spring, the smells around us can be a product of fascinating, purposeful chemistry in nature. Thanks for watching. Let us know any mysteries of nature you want us to cover in the comments. See you next time.